Welcome, everybody. Um, I'm totally thrilled to be here in London today doing another OpenShift Commons gathering. This has been one of those um, very last minute, serendipitous kind of events. There were a collision of wonderful conferences that are all happening in Europe that got a number of our engineering team from Red Hat and people who are contributing to OpenShift um, and Commons members who corralled me at Austin, um, at the Austin gathering and said, hey, you know, we should do something in London. And the London Red Hat um, uh, uh, solution architects and other folks um, said they'd back me up. And so within 30 days, I think we pulled this one together and you're all here in the room. So I am totally thrilled that we could do this as a community event. And, um, and so thank you for coming this morning um, on a beautiful day in London, which is, I guess, a rarity. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, OpenShift, what OpenShift Commons is, and why you're here. Um, I threw this slide in because it came across my desk at the last minute the other day. And what was really amazing to me is we've been doing, or I've been doing cloud stuff for the past five years. If you don't know me, my name is Diane Mueller. Um, you will know me by the end of the day. Um, I was one of the members of the OpenShift Evangelist team during the early V2 days and did community management, and now I'm the director of community development. And I'm totally amazed at how fast this is all happening. And this came across my desk the other day, and Gartner expects 25% of all the application workloads to be in the public cloud by the end of this year. And I know a lot of you are in financial services or in government and other entities where you may not be using the public cloud so much. But to me, the thing that was astounding that this was 2018. This wasn't 2020, 2024. This is this year. And this year, I feel not just for the OpenShift community, but for the cloud native community and all of the other assembled and upstream communities is a real big tipping point. And you may have heard a little bit of news that came across the wires um, late last night um, about uh, Red Hat acquiring CoreOS. And we'll talk a little bit about that in the next presentation. If you hadn't heard about that, surprise. Um, so this is really a, mat a matter of um, that tipping point where the community around Kubernetes, around the cloud native tooling that we use in OpenShift and OpenShift itself really has gone to the next level. And it's, it's astounding to me. Because now, at this juncture, I think everybody realizes that digital transformation is just a given. And we talk about it a lot at Red Hat. This slide gets used by everybody in marketing at Red Hat. Um, I'm not going to talk about digital transformation from these three perspectives, the applications, platform, or process. I'm going to talk about it, what it means when we have to transform our communities to support this kind of change and why we did um, the change to the OpenShift Commons model. So we all know that OpenShift Origin, and many of you probably did it first, um, downloaded OpenShift Origin from GitHub and played with it, um, maybe did the mini shift, maybe did one of the VMs in the early days. Um, all of our stuff is out in the open. Everything is done um, with open communities, with the Kubernetes community, with the Docker community, with OCI, CNCF, and you'll be hearing from some of those folks today as well. And we are trying very hard to do all of this collaboration in the open. Um, and it is that capabilities that makes us able to do the continuous innovation that is what has made OpenShift the success that it is today. So OpenShift is a, as a repository in GitHub. You can go there, you can download it. But it also pulls in, uh, I like this diagram because it pulls in all of these other projects, some, some of them Red Hat, some of them not Red Hat, and we push them out um, into our three flagship pro products in our business unit, OpenShift Container Platform, OpenShift Dig Digital, and OpenShift Online, and now OpenShift IO. I need to update that slide just a little bit, and I'm sure we'll have another update of it too. But it's really been more of an interesting thing. We're pulling in from lots of different areas. So you'll see uh, some of the sponsors that are here today, and thanks again for your support. Um, and lots of other pro um, companies are adding services to our ecosystem, are adding um, feedback into the OpenShift engineering and the OpenShift contributors um, 
so that we make this project the success that it is. So Commons is, came about for an interesting reason. So typically, someone like myself, who is um, a community manager for an open source project, whether it's at Red Hat or elsewhere, my whole job is about trying to coerce you into contributing code to my GitHub repo. So I can you know, show contributions to my project. And when we pivoted at OpenShift and at Red Hat to using Kubernetes, um, we had gone from V2, a Ruby on Rails application on MongoDB that we, was very in-house driven. And we had this fire hose of information that we had to get out to you and to our entire global community very quickly because that's a big pivot from doing this platform as a service on MongoDB and Ruby on Rails that we knew everything about to something where we were collaborating in the open. So we needed to come up with a new um, community model and a new communications channels, or channels with an S, more likely. And in some ways, I've become like a, a TV channel myself. You'll see me doing OpenShift Commons briefings, at sometimes two or three a week, just to get the word out there. Um, there's lots of other um, events that we do each year, but it's really about trying to bring all of you together in more of a peer-to-peer -peer network um, to promote peer-to-peer -peer interactions with each other. Because if Red Hat has to be in every single conversation with every single uh, person, it just doesn't work. It doesn't scale. I don't scale. The evangelist team, some of whom are here today, we don't scale. The PMs don't scale. This has to be a community-driven thing. And so today, what I'm going to ask you a lot is we've specifically built this day around having longer breaks, a longer lunch and put you at round tables so that you'll connect with each other um, and talk to each other and coach each other. If you go on our Slack channel now, you'll probably find Greg arguing with Larry or somebody else about what monitoring tool. That was the argument on the Slack channel this morning. You know, what was the best way to monitor OpenShift? So, and none of those people work at Red Hat. And actually, none of them are really what um, traditionally would be called a contributor to OpenShift. They are just people like yourselves who are using OpenShift in production or adding services or providing services or hosting OpenShift somewhere who all have this common network that they're using to leverage and it's very virtual, which is kind of why I like to do these gatherings and get you physically in the same room with each other because I think the physical face-to-face -face stuff is really what binds us together as well. We can do a lot virtually, but we do need to have these connections. So we do. Um, the Commons briefings, events like this one, gatherings. Um, we have special interest groups that I encourage you to join. We just launched one for machine learning on OpenShift. Um, the next meeting for that is February 9th. There's lots of mailing lists. I'm not going to say you shouldn't do code contributions because we love that too. Um, but we have a very active Slack channel. So if you aren't on it already, um, during one of the breaks or at lunchtime, find me and I will add you and we can talk there. The growth of this community is astounding to me. Um, when I started this uh, almost four, four and a half, five years ago, when I started at OpenShift, it was a much smaller world. Um, it was very posy. Today, um, in the past 100 days, I did a count. And you can look at it. It's all out in the open on GitHub. Um, we add them to the participants list on the commons.openshift.org site as fast as I can get them in. But many of you, um, there's one new member here. Was it? Informatic Matters, there we go. One new one just joined and handed me his sign-up sheet today. So there's tons of folks out there who are in similar companies, um, tangential companies, service providers that you may use that um, will really kind of help you um, on your journey with OpenShift, besides the engineers and the contributors that are working on it. So at the moment, we're around 330 plus, give or take a few silent people who couldn't get permission to be public about it. And some of you are in the room today, and I won't call you out. But um, I will make you get on stage at some point. Um, there are over 50 countries. So wherever you are in the world, there is somebody probably doing a meetup um, and probably um, deploying OpenShift in that region. So it's, there's a lot of people everywhere. And I try and keep this slide up to date, but it's almost impossible. For us, though, the, the real crux of the matter is all of this collaboration happens 
um, with the upstream. It's very important. We all know that Kubernetes is under the hood at, of OpenShift, and we do a lot of work in the Kubernetes um, world and in other ancillary upstream projects. Uh, we, I, I don't really care whether we're number one, number two, number three, or number 16 in total number of contributions to, um, to any of these projects. What it is is we're there, and we're trying to support all of the tooling that you need to make your production deployments work and all of the tooling we need to help support that as well. Because we are hosting two clouds, basically. OpenShift Online is on AWS, and OpenShift Dedicated is on Google's cloud. Um, and we are using it ourselves. So we have a good vested interest in making sure all of these things work. Um, like we mentioned the other day, uh, or yesterday, was the other day, it was so soon. Um, 10 o'clock last night, Dan texts me, guess what, we bought CoreOS. I'm like, oh no, how am I supposed to get to sleep now? Um, but one of the things that that does is it actually um, brings a whole another um, group of wonderful engineers into the fold to work on OpenShift and all of the related technologies um, at Red Hat. And so there's going to be a whole lot more people doing it. A whole lot more of us will be um, working in the different SIGs at, on Kubernetes. So there's a lot of leadership in the Kubernetes world. It's, uh, I'm not sure if Gary Brown here yet. There's also a number of other folks in the open tracing world, OCI, um, lots of other places where we're trying make, to make sure that we um, are participating actively, bringing that feedback back into the OpenShift engineering team. There, you know, this slide too gets out of date really ridiculously fast as well because um, I think we've just added Rook to CNCF. Um, there's always new projects coming into the CNCF and we participate actively there and in the upstream this panel this afternoon, um, Chris Anzik will be with us and he can ask you, you can ask him anything. Um, because really um, what we look at this as is the collaboration in the open is what makes us a success across all of the streams with all of your peers because really it's not just open source, it's open collaboration, it's the connections you make in the room today um, and hopefully in the futures. And in the room today, um, and I apologize if I missed a few, um, are a lot of folks besides the sponsors. There's, um, I think we had over 50 different companies who um, were uh, signed up to come today. Hopefully all of you show up, but um, it's, that's pretty amazing to me because when you think about where we started in the beginning four and a half years ago, it was a much smaller crew and it was a much more Red Hat crew. There are a lot of Red Hatters here today. So um, if you're a Red Hatter, raise your hand. Yeah. So there, one of the things about Commons that I really like and was sort of an extra thing that happened was that um, a lot of the internal folks started joining the Commons conversations too and that's led to a lot of um, internal education and education um, between the, the different projects as well. So it's really, please do connect with these folks. Because even though my job is not to drive contributions um, into the code base, we have one of the most active um, and we're continuing to attract new developers to work on the project, um, so you may do that. And when I started four and a half years ago, there were five external companies contributing to OpenShift. And now there's over 70 com company organizations contributing to OpenShift. And that's without trying to lasso you or beg you or whatever I have to do, grovel to get you to contribute your codes and your fixes and your patches. That's just organically from having this network and having you talk to each other and give us feedback, make pull requests, log issues, bug fixes, come to SIG meetings. It's really pretty awesome. And I'm, I'm very grateful for this. So this is really um, what the future looks like to me. Um, it's very uh, way out there. Uh, and I apologize if I didn't get your logo on there too. There's a lot of you. And it's, even though we have OpenShift at the center, that's the center of my universe. Really, this, you guys are the center of the universe. And hopefully, uh, today, you'll get to meet a lot of your things. Um, I'm talking a little fast because we have a lot on the agenda today. So this was my 10-minute welcome that I do kind of 10 minutes, <coughs> close. Um, I'm gonna bring um, Dan Walsh up to the stage right after this, and he's gonna, he's gonna try and figure out how to message the core OS and everything container related, because overnight, the state of the container ecosystem kind of changed. 
Um, and then we'll have Diogenes. And then what I've asked is all of our wonderful sponsors, I've given them five minutes to give you their pitch afterwards, just before lunch. And so we're going to have them come up on stage and do that. And we have a nice long lunch. Um, and Paul Mori, who is, some of you will recognize, you will recognize him as soon as he comes into the room. I think he's still sleeping because he flew in from the States. But um, he's the one with the red mohawk. Uh, he's been working on the open service broker and the service catalog work. And he's going to give us, actually, he says, a pretty action-packed demo. Um, and then we have my, kind of my favorite thing is the upstream, this panel, where we're bringing in people from all of the different upstreams projects. And you can ask them anything. And I'm really going to ask you to ask them anything. We'll have a few pre-programmed questions that Michael's going to ask. But we have um, handheld microphones. We'll go around the room, get you to ask your questions. And then we have two panels in the end, um, financial, the financial services one and the one in .gov. Um, and th we'll bring those to a close as quickly as possible because there's beer afterwards. Um, and we'll hopefully get you to come and socialize with us and talk to each other and ask more questions. And so that's really what this day is about. It's about on the breaks, making those connections with everybody. Um, again, while you're down there on the breaks, the, all of the wonderful sponsors who, without whom this would not have happened um, have tables set up. Um, and I've invited the Red Hat Open Innovation Labs. They have their table set up. Um, I think the Red Hat mobile folks are going to come as well. Um, they haven't shown up from Dublin yet, but hopefully they'll get here. Um, so there's a lot of people to interact with at the lunch breaks, in the coffee breaks. Please do so. Um, they've got lots to tell you about. Um, this evening, we're going to try and start around 4.50 if I don't talk too long. Um, and we think we have the room until 6.30, 7 o'clock, um, until they kick us out. So, or you finish all the beer that we've bought for you. So let's get started. Um, our first speaker is Dan Walsh. He's going to revel us with everything, the big reveal about containers. So thanks, and we'll hook him up and get you started.